You're watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. From Toronto, Ontario, I'm Sami Sayed. Welcome to the show. Now coming up, we have an interview with Hilal Ibrahim over her hijab collaboration with Nordstrom. But first, let's take a look at the headlines. Vaccine mandate suspended for domestic travelers. NCCM disappointed with government's dismissal of UN inquiry on Palestine. Omar Mo'allem wins Emerging Artist Award. Rights Watchdog documents decades of abuses, crimes in Myanmar. And now the details. The federal government has announced a suspension of vaccine mandates for domestic travelers and federal employees effective June 20th. Canadian citizens coming from abroad are still expected to meet entry requirements and wear masks. The Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs, Dominic LeBlanc, tells local sources that mandates can be put back up if COVID worsens. Transport Minister Omar al Ghabra says the latest change is not a response to congestion in Canada's airports. He maintains that the government continues to work and address the recent hours-long delays and shortages of labour. The National Council of Canadian Muslims, or NCCM, says they are disappointed with the federal government's disagreement over the mandate and approach of a UN-sponsored Commission of Inquiry. The independent inquiry found the occupation of Palestinian territory and the human rights abuses against their people to be the root cause of conflict in the region. New Democratic Party MP Heather McPherson brought up the UN inquiry in the House of Commons yesterday and called on the government to revisit their policy towards Palestine and Israel. Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs Robert Oliphant did not acknowledge the inquiry. He said they are committed to long-lasting peace in the region and between its people. Omar Mu'allim is among this year's recipients of the 2022 Emerging Artists Award. In a ceremony Friday evening, the Lieutenant Governor of Alberta Arts Award Foundation handed Mu'allam and 10 others the recognition in $10,000 cash. Born in Canada and raised in a Muslim Lebanese community, Mu'allam is the author of Praying to the West, How Muslims Shape the Americas. He is known for his ability to tie stories with world history and broader social matters. Since 2008, the foundation has given the award to support and encourage promising artists early in their careers. An international rights watchdog says over 135,000 Rohingya and Khmer Muslims in Myanmar's Rakhine state have been arbitrarily and indefinitely detained in the last decade. The report released today is based on interviews with the minority Rohingya and humanitarian workers. It documents how authorities in the predominantly Buddhist country have capitalized on the, quote, ethnic cleansing campaign. In their words, severe constraints on movement, livelihoods, and access to humanitarian aid and healthcare have only worsened over the past decade. The report also criticized the international community for its lackluster role in efforts to resolve the crisis. That's it for the news. Now with us is Hilal Ibrahim. Raised in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Sister Hilal is the founder of Henna and Hijabs. She is in Canada this week to attend a meet and greet related to her collaboration with Nordstrom. Welcome, Sister Hilan. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Before we get into the collaboration, tell me a little bit about henna and hijabs. How did it all start? So it started really out of a Nida experience when I was in high school and also for the Eid holiday. I couldn't find the perfect hijab for um, those special occasions. I wanted to know, first of all, I wanted something unique that was different from what everyone was wearing, but I also wanted some uh, a piece where um, I knew how it was being made, where it was being made, what materials were being uh, used. I wanted to be conscious of all of that. So um, I set out on a little adventure, went to our local fabric outlet, sourced the first materials, which later on um, became the materials I used for the first collection and the first hijab that I actually created. And really the vision for the company was born from there. Mm -hmm. Now the company name has hijabs in it, which is understandable given that you do sell hijabs, but there's also henna. Where does henna come from? So that was another um, uh, problem I I solved within the community. Um, We, um, I self-taught myself how to do henna as well in that same summer time where I 
fixed the hijabs and provided a solution there. Um, and I uh, was doing research in a pediatric ER in Minnesota. And so um, noticed that a lot of young girls were coming in with reactions to uh, henna or what was called henna, which really was an ammonia based hair dye that was being used on skin. Um, so I, I kind of used my kitchen as a, as a lab and created an organic henna mix that stains very a very dark red and mimics um, a, a more richer staining of, of the black, which is uh, not so good for your skin at all. So, uh, so this put henna and hijabs together, together to provide a solution to both of the problems that mm -hmm. I saw and witnessed firsthand. Mm -hmm. Now, Hannah and Hijaz began in 2017, and now the collaboration with Nordstrom happened last year. How did you move from its inception to the collaboration? Yeah, really, by the honestly, the by the by the mercy of God, and um, we we worked hard and um, we planned and um, and we we trusted we 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 trusted in Allah. Uh, um, a really profound hadith that uh, stuck with me during this entire journey has been trust in Allah. Uh, but tie your camel. So we certainly did that. And alhamdulillah, um, one year ago this month, we were able to partner with Nordstrom in the United States and Canada and provided their first ever hijab line. And it's been such an incredible honor to create that accessibility for young Muslim girls and women and to go into a, a major retailer like Nordstrom and pull the hijab that you need with your full look and to not worry about going anywhere else to find the hijab. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's certainly a problem that I personally have when I go shopping, meaning to find an outfit and then also find a hijab that matches with it. Now, you have a meet and greet scheduled for this Friday. Can you tell us some more details about the event? Yes. So we are doing a celebratory launch and meet and greet event in Toronto at the Yorkdale Nordstrom on Friday from 5 to 7. Um, it'll be a celebration really celebrating not only this collection, but Muslim women and our beautiful identity and um, our, our, um, our, mo not only our modesty, but our, the fact that yes, we still do want to wear beautiful things. So, um, at this event, there will be, um, uh, there will be a henna artist, there will be a fashion illustrator, there will be a modest fashion show so people can actually see what our hijabs look like with full looks. Um, and it's perfect for uh, Eid and, and all the summer events that are coming up. Um, there will be, uh, light, light bites and, um, I, I come join us for a celebration. I hope you can make it too. <laughs> and can anyone join? Yes, yes, it is open. It is uh, free and open to the public, and just a really exciting event all around. And we we can't wait to see everyone there. Mm -hmm. Now, this journey for you has definitely been a long one, but also very rewarding. I think now with the collaboration, what does it mean for you to have your hijab sold in a store like Nordstrom across the U.S. and Canada? It really puts into perspective the um, what the I guess the ability to dream and hope and plan and and just to dream big. If you were to ask me five years ago, who would you like to see your company partner with first? I would have told you Nordstrom inevitably. And so to see that come to life um, has been nothing short of humbling. And so I think it's a big moment not only for our company but for the Muslim community and for really women everywhere to see something that was not traditionally available in retailers and in fashion to see this more available on a wide scale platform and, and stores all across the United States um, and in Canada has been something that's really, it, it gives me chills sometimes seeing young girls walk into the store and shopping the product. It's just like, wow, our company helped make this happen. So I, I'm, I'm excited and I'm honored. And, and this one is not only for the younger me and myself, but also for my sisters for my aunts, for my friends, and for our, our greater Muslim community. Mm -hmm. Now, what would you say is something that you've either adapted or changed or even redeveloped in your products as you marketed to more people? Um, I think we have always had a unique sense of uh, vision for the company. We designed, so just to, just to kind of share, this collection we've created with Nordstrom is unique to an exclusive to Nordstrom. So you cannot find these prints anywhere else. We made every piece with intention. We used sustainable materials. We used organic cottons. Um, we used a lot of silk this round for summer. And, and we, we carefully thought through every single piece. So um, it was made with a lot of love and uh, that's really what makes this collaboration special. Mm -hmm. 
Now, after all this, I have to ask, what's going to come next? I mean, what do you want to see happen with your collections in the future? So uh, it's we have a lot of exciting things that we're working on that'll come next, inshallah. Um, in addition to uh, creating and adding this line, the first ever hijab line to Nordstrom and creating accessibility in fashion. Um, uh, in 2019, our company actually launched the first ever medical grade hijab. And we launched in uh, one of the largest healthcare systems here in Minnesota. So that was, and it was the first hospital to offer this to employees in the country, in the United States. So. Um, we see ourselves really um, growing um, on multiple fronts, but um, really excited for all that's to come, inshallah. Mm -hmm. And finally, Hilal, based on your own experience, what would you say to young Muslims or entrepreneurs and designers as advice? I would say uh, to the, uh, and I get asked this question a lot, uh, two of the things that uh, I always mm -hmm. say is one, um, dream big and know that if you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala near you um, and you and uh, your vision will go far. Like it goes hand in hand. Um, a lot of times uh, I'm in meetings and people ask me, your company is only five years old. How did you make this happen? And the answer I give to Muslims and non-Muslims is God. Like I didn't do, I, I worked hard. I can tell you I work hard, but it really wasn't that. So um, I, I found um, uh, proximity uh, to my creator to be something that's really grounded me in this journey. Uh, the second piece of advice really is um, for, especially for Muslim sisters, is that sisterhood of uplifting each other. I wouldn't be where I am without someone else either holding a door for me or giving me advice or mentoring me. Um, I've, I, I didn't have an entrepreneurship background. I was, I have an extensive healthcare background. I was headed to medical school. So to have um, uh, a sisterhood near me has really done a lot and the way we we grow the way we support and uplift each other is really by picking each other up and I think that oftentimes we think that we can't we can't win or someone can't succeed without uh, either stepping on someone or pushing them to the side but the real way we all succeed and we grow is to support one, one another and uplift one another so um, I found that those two pieces of advice have done a lot a lot for me and that is advice to myself, first and foremost. <laughs> and Hillel, we're running really short on time, but very quickly, what are some of the barriers that throughout your journey in the fashion industry, uh, hijab industry, that you've had to overstep in your uh, in your process? Uh, really, I think when you're new, any new entrepreneur, um, you get a lot of no's to begin with. And I think just having that grit and that okay, I can do it. Okay. It's, we can make this happen. Okay. Keep going and just not giving up. And I think that's where the tawakkul piece comes in of just believing in yourself and also believing in that Allah has a great plan for you. Um, but barriers, the, uh, the uh, other barrier is really just people not having a familiarity or understanding what the hijab is. So kind of just walking through and explaining everything has been something that we found to be not necessarily a block, but uh, more so a, something that's taken us uh, more time to get to just because we have to explain and give mm -hmm. you know context and provide examples. So it's an it's a it's a alhamdulillah though I'm grateful that I'm 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 the one uh, 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 working on this and that um, I've been given the task to to put this out into the world and I think it's it's an amana so I hope I'm able to mm -hmm. do it. exactly. Well, that brings us to the end of our interview. Thank you so much, Sister Hilal, for joining us and all the best for your future journey. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You are watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. That's it from our Toronto studios tonight. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more Canadian Muslim content. Stay safe and until next time.